today we are starting the last chapter of the quarter, chapter 22, which is on protein synthesis, nucleic acids, DNA, RNA, all that type of stuff. And for most students in, in Chem 131, um, this is all stuff that you've already learned in biology. So it's, um, for most students here, it's pretty simple, straightforward. You guys are definitely in the home stretch. That's something to celebrate. We're going to start section 22.1 talking about nucleosides and nucleotides, um, just some introductory stuff, definitions, um, just in case there's any differences in the terminology that's used in chemistry and biology. So um, first of all, we're going to define a nucleic acid. In this chapter 22 is focusing on nucleic acids and we're going to define a nucleic acid as a large molecule that is made up of smaller molecules and these small molecules are called nucleotides. And this is really similar to proteins. So proteins are a large molecule that's made up of small molecules that we call amino acids. A nucleic acid is also um, a collection of a whole bunch of nucleotides put together. There are two different types of nucleic acids. And those two types are, as you probably know, DNA and RNA. DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA contains millions of nucleotides. And the job of DNA inside our body is to transmit information, genetic information, from the parent to the offspring. The other type of nucleic acid, as you know, is RNA, which stands for ribonucleic acid. And brief definition of RNA, it's much smaller than DNA. It contains only thousands of nucleotides. And its job is to transmit information within an organism. So it's not going from parent to offspring, like within you, the organism. Uh, and the information that it's transmitting is information that's used to control cellular function, um, just basically keeping you alive. Now, we are going to spend more time talking about DNA and RNA, and when we do that, we'll um, uncover even more differences between the two, because you're probably thinking, oh, there's way more differences than just those two, and that's accurate. This is just really introductory stuff. So um, the next thing that we're going to look at are the structures of the nucleotides that are in RNA, RNA and DNA. So the structure of DNA's nucleotide. Uh, and it's actually a pretty, pretty complicated structure. So we're going to start in the middle, we're drawing the middle first, so you wanna leave yourself some space to the left and to the right because we're drawing the middle first. Um, there is a 
five-membered ring that is going to be a sugar monosaccharide. So get yourself ready to draw the monosaccharide. Um, this is this particular monosaccharide does not have oxygens on every single one of the carbon atoms. So it does look a little different than the sugars that we looked at in the carbohydrates chapter. Also, it has a nitrogen up there in that one particular position. Now, I'm not going to ask you to, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to ask you to recite this structure from memory. Um, so that's the structure of the monosaccharide unit in DNA. This monosaccharide is called D-D-oxyribose. It gets its name um, because the, the base name of this particular monosaccharide is ribose, but this particular sugar is missing an oxygen in that area right there that I just pointed at. So it gets the name deoxy because it's been deoxygenated at that one particular site. So attached to this monosaccharide over to the left, we have a phosphate group which we have seen phosphates before. So that's a phosphorus that has four oxygens around it. One of the oxygens is double bonded to the phosphorus. The others are single bonded. Two of the oxygens have negative formal charges on it. So this is our phosphate. And then um, these two pieces together, one of the things that tricks, uh, trips people up a lot is what is the, the difference between a, a nucleotide and a nucleoside. That's very complicated. Um, so let me finish drawing this and we'll talk about this. Attached to the nitrogen, there's a component up here, which we're just going to call a base. Um, it, this, the base up here at the top can vary. There's four or five different bases that you can attach to the deoxyribose. So going back to what's the difference between a nucleoside and a nucleotide, what we just drew there is the full on nucleotide. If we wanted to draw a nucleoside, it would look like this. So the phosphate would be gone. And the nucleoside is just um, the base and the monosaccharide component. So we'll put the phosphate back and now it's a nucleotide. For RNA, the structure is going to be really similar. And I'm going to attempt to use some awesome technology here. I don't know if I can copy this or if I, all I can do is move it. Copy. Paste. Awesome. All right, so for RNA, the only thing that's different in RNA is the sugar which has an OH group um, where we would expect to see one. And then because that OH group is there, the monosaccharide is ribose, not deoxyribose. Uh, other than that, the two structures of the nucleotides in DNA and RNA are exactly the same. So last thing that we're going to talk about is what are the bases that attach to the monosaccharides? What do they look like? So these are going to be the bases that attach to the monosaccharide. in DNA and RNA. There's actually five different bases that we can attach. And the five different bases, um, they have two different types. So there's five total bases, two categories. One type is called a pyrimidine. 
there are three pyramidine structures. They are single rings. They are pretty complicated rings. So they've got a lot of stuff going on. So this is a six membered ring. Two of the atoms in the ring are nitrogens. The rest of them are carbons. There's a couple double bonds in the ring. There's a carbon oxygen double bond hanging out of the ring. There's an NH2 hanging out of the ring. So you can see this, this guy is pretty tricky. That's one. I'm gonna use my technology again because the structures of the pyrimidines are, are very similar. Um, and then for our second pyrimidine, we're gonna modify this a little bit. So we're going to change the NH2 up top. We're gonna get rid of one of the double bonds inside of the ring. This is going to have a carbon oxygen double bond sticking up up top, but the rest of it is identical. And then for pyrimidine number three, I feel like I'm getting pretty good at this copy paste stuff. For pyrimidine number three, we are going to add a CH3 group coming out of the ring, um, but that's the only modification that we make. So these are the three different pyrimidines. Their names are cytosine, and it gets the abbreviation C. The second one is uracil, which is abbreviated U. And the last one is thymine, which is, as you know, abbreviated with T. And as you also, I'm sure you all also know this, uracil is only found in RNA, and thymine is only found in DNA. But cytosine is in both of them. So those are three bases that are uh, classified as pyrimidines. The other two bases are classified as purines. They have different structures. They have bigger rings. These are also going to be complicated rings. Um, the first thing that we're drawing is a six-membered ring, which looks a lot like something that you would see for a pyrimidine. It's got more double bonds in it. We have an NH2 sticking up top. Um, I don't know why this double bond is very wiggly. I'm going to fix that. And then these also have another ring that is fused or attached to that six-membered ring. This one is a five-membered ring. It's just kind of squished in there like that. So that's one of the structures of a purine. And then the second purine structure which is pretty similar. Um, this one, we are going to remove one of the double bonds from the six-membered ring. We're going to add a carbon-oxygen double bond up top. Oops, that's supposed to be a hydrogen that I just drew. We also have an NH2 sticking off of the six-membered ring. Uh, and those are all the changes for that guy. So these two are called adenine on the left, which is abbreviated A, and guanine on the right, which is abbreviated G. And uh, cytosine, adenine, and guanine, they are all used in both RNA and DNA. So those two, uracil and thymine, are the only ones that have restrictions in terms of um, which type of nucleotide they're allowed to attach to. So those are the five bases.